Holy shit, I'm back, and I'm here to answer one of Dota's most important questions. Are Medusa's pubes also snakes? And along the way, we might potentially just learn how to play her. <coughs> here is a triangle. Perhaps you'd like to examine it. The top rung's five points, the middle's two, and the bottom's one. If they pick heroes that add up to over five, then don't pick her. Or do. I don't fucking know shit. This episode, we have a very special tiny little fourth triangle right at the top. That slot is worth 57 points, and that's where Invoker goes. The second to top triangle has OD, Nyx, and AM, because Medusa, by and large, is countered by Mana Burn, and Mana Burn alone. Coddle's in the middle rung, just because Medusa doesn't actually move in teamfights. And just to fill in the rest, uh, I guess the middle can also be reserved for Slark, who can sort of be a problem with the whole stat stealing. I mean, if Slark's, <laughs> if Slark's hitting you, that means he's not hitting your supports. And uh, if you're hitting Slark, you're hitting his. And the bottom rung's just hard hitting carries. Why not? It's pretty much irrelevant. If they don't have mana burners, congrats on the plus 25 MMR. Now, let's invert this pyramid for a sec because I'd like to remove points for any hero that depend on armor reduction just because mana shield is calculated before armor anyway and that's most of your effective HP. Now, if you don't know what effective HP means, like me, uh, I'd probably look it up because I'm about to use it like 33, 34 more times in the next few minutes. Radiant's top tower is hurting. That's four to roll. As with every only way to play guide I've done, you can find this one in-game as well as right here. It's the first link in the description. With my fixation on leveling stats and hoarding skill points, you'll be surprised to find that we level spells like a normal human being for this hero. It goes like this. E W W Q W R W Q Q Q E E E R stats R and then the rest in stats. And here's why. Mana shield is the best skill for level one just because everything else is worse. We'd only use Mystic Snake from level 2 onwards, and Split Shot isn't quite good yet. We then immediately max Snake, but then we do something unorthodox. We max Split Shot. The reason being one level of Mana Shield gives us the 60% reduction, and that's all we need for now. We're going to constantly get our mana back anyway, and besides, winning a fight in Dota isn't just a case of dying slower than your opponent, it's more nuanced than that. Split Shot gives us the ability to immediately hit the jungle and clear all five camps with Mask of Madness. This is amazing. We also level Stone Gaze at level 6, instead of the typical after Mana Shield is maxed. Reasoning is, it's an anti-gang tool. Losing effective HP is totally worth it, just make sure to pay attention and turn off your mana shield before it hits under 200. But in the end we just get the value point. While it's the worst scaling spell, it's still better than stats, so after everything else is maxed out, we put the last two levels in it, 14 and 16. Now let's get into the advanced stuff. Split Shot has a range of 100 more than Medusa's normal attack, and you should imagine the skill as firing 5 times at once rather than one attack hitting five people. As in, one attack missing doesn't affect the rest. They're all independent of each other. Uh, there's actually a glitch where the damage displayed on the HUD is wrong when split shot's on. It only reduces base attack damage, but remember that any bonus damage is also reduced in the actual game. Split shot arrows don't target wards or buildings, but will still fire if the main attack is aimed at them. Basically, if you're pushing a tower, attack the tower and the creeps die anyway. Also, know when to turn split shot off. If there's a lone tower or a nearly dead guy about to TP but you really want to attack his full HP ally nearby, reconsider. Mystic Snake is so good, and it turns to pure damage if the target is petrified. Early game, hitting a hero with even the first bounce while he's frozen is still more damage than a few auto attacks you're missing out on. Mana Shield finally stays after death. You used to be an awful Aegis carrier because you'd die with it on, respawn, and get stunned, and then die because you couldn't turn it back on. Stone Gaze will immediately slow anyone who looks 90 degrees towards you. It also counts up on a Puck who's face shifted. How Puck manages to both not exist and look into Medusa's eyes is completely beyond me. And Stone Gaze is a frustrating spell. Not just because it's hard to land, but because there's a half second cast time, which is like an eternity in Dota time. And during that time, this is Medusa's animation. Do 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 do, I'm just walking. Oh, all right, I'll pop my ult. And then a half second later, this. 
There's no actual animation there. So, Valve, if you're watching, and I hope you are, because in the default suggested items for Medusa, you tell us to get Lincolns, here is an animation I made for Stone Gaze. Looking back, that smut actually might be the closest thing to a true image of Medusa because it in fact did petrify me. And I imagine it made a few of you a little rock hard. And I guess we've answered that burning question. Medusa doesn't have snakes for pubes, so I guess we can all stop watching. But if you're still here, in exactly 140. seconds, I will lose all credibility I had, so bear with me. Start off with some tangos and a wraith band, swapping out wraith band for Basilius if you doubt you'll get off successful snake bounces, or you're up against someone with a really small mana pool. Boots of choice are power treads, and let me explain why. There are people out there who will swear upon phase boots, and they wouldn't be wrong. They give you more damage, they give you the ability to actually chase down people, and the phase active means you can walk through a person who's trying to turn away from you. But these are really minor perks in the grand scheme of the universe, and treads have one perk that outshines them all. With treads, you can tread switch. You can cast snake on int treads and retrieve the snake on edgy treads. That means if you hit enough targets, mystic snake is free. A potentially free, potentially 550 damage nuke that gives you effective HP. So buy treads. After we have treads, we finish our Aquila and go Mask of Madness. Yasha, Midas, Helm of the Dominator, Mask of Madness. All cost approximately 2,000 gold and all help one farm in their own special way. Let me explain why Mom is the best of all of them. I am a normal hero. I activate Mom and take about 23% more damage. Now I'm a normal hero with one level of mana shield. Before any amps or reductions, 60% of every hit I take is taken straight out of my mana pool. This is unchangeable, which means only 40% of the damage of every hit is amplified by Mom, and that ends up being only 10% extra damage taken for 100 attack speed, 17% extra movement speed, and lifesteal. For even more convincing, we don't have a build manta, so Yasha is a detour. My this gives late game potential to a hero with late game potential. Helm could work if you wanted to stack or steal an Alpha Wolf or a Frost Ogre, but it gives no real damage compared to Mom. Mom is just the best option. You won't hear that very often. So now let's get right into our first big item. Sky is the typical pickup. Everything it gives is great, and we can sing its praises all we want, but I don't want to. So let's talk about something situational and something interesting. As of 6.86, Invoker and OD are flavor of the month, and because of them, Nyx is also picked. OD burns your int, Nyx deals damage based on your int, and Invoker burns mana. There is an item that nearly nullifies all three of these heroes who typically counter Medusa, and it's Bloodstone. Oh my god, blasphemy, blasphemy, I can hear them calling it in the streets, but here. Bloodstone is an item that gives you 400 mana, 175 less than Skadi, but no int. Having no int, but both static and percentage-based mana regen means you're constantly regaining effective HP. OD can't totally steal your shield away from you, Nyx does less damage and steals less mana, and Invoker burns mana that just regens right back up again. Skadi is the default pickup, but when the stars align, pick up a Bloodstone. Regardless of which, it's time to pick up a damage item. MKB is always good, Maelstrom situationally good, Daedalus is good if you know none of them will buy evasion, just get our damage item. Too many smart players I know consume themselves with the idea that Medusa should just hoard stat items and hey, if you want to be able to say you stayed alive as the enemy takes your ancient, more power to you. And while we're on the topic, you know what else gives a bit of damage? Rapier. And yes, I did just seriously suggest to buy a Rapier on a Mask of Madness carrying hero. I don't think this will ever happen again. After a damage item, pick up a talisman of evasion. I lied when I said there was no way to reduce the amount of damage mana shield takes. There's always just dodging the attack entire. If you're keeping tally, this increases your already insane effective HP by an extra 25%. If the game's still not over, uh, buy more rapiers. Situationally, pick up a BKB if they have an AM, a PL, or anyone who's keeping you disarmed, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, ideally, you won't need it, even if you're being stunned. Medusa is a sponge. Anything she's tanking, her squishy supports aren't. Sometimes finishing butterfly is good too, as is picking up a scythe. And now let's talk about what you should never get. 
If I said this back in Medusa's heyday, I would be dragged through the streets for preaching what I am about to preach. Don't ever go Lincolns, and don't ever go Manta. As I just said, Medusa is a sponge. A very slow moving sponge. Blocking one spell to then tank all of the rest is not worth the price of admission. And uh, Manta, oh god. Manta is the worst core item you can go. For example, it gives uh, 135 mana, but costs 165 mana to cast. You're losing mana, which means you're losing effective HP every time you use it. And your illusions don't get mana shield. And they get ranged illusion damage and health. And they do no damage, because Medusa herself has no base damage. It also, like Lincoln's, can dispel one disable, but then you tank every other one. This video is already long, but if you want, you can have some civilized scholarly debates in the comments about this sacrilege. Medusa is one of the hardest carries in the game. Your hard carry always goes safe lane. So let's take Medusa mid. She's not the best at contesting runes with her one level of mana shield, so just block the lane. When using Mystic Snake, always try to hit the ranged creep and hit the enemy mid laner with the final bounce. If the enemy is a melee hero, you can pretty much always hit them, and if they're ranged, wait for them to want to get a last hit and chuck it right before they wind up their attack at an angle that makes all creeps line up as much as possible. When you have treads, always cast on Ent and retrieve Snake on Edgy. If you really wanted to, you could drop your Aquila if you have it at this point, on the ground. Just fucking drop it. I don't care what Slag says. You can get like an extra three mana and nothing could possibly go wrong for dropping your items for efficiency. Mystic Snake is a bizarre spell that after a hundred games of Medusa, I still haven't wrapped my head around. It nearly always jumps to the nearest target, but if the nearest target is in between you and the original target, it'll turn around, hit that one, and fail to turn around again. It'll just come right back to you. Or maybe that's completely wrong and I'm just creating a pattern out of a spell that's just completely chaotic. To be fair, I can't complain to Ice Frog that a 550 damage nuke is hard to land. That'd be like a bunch of people whining that Invoker is too hard and Ice Frog buffing literally every single one of his spells and giving him a Ravage at level 25. It just, it, it wouldn't happen. Medusa is a lane winner, and she's not a ganker. With this in mind, at about the time you have Mask of Madness and Aquila, the enemy mid's probably off crying, or ganking, or both. Push mid, and then farm. Farm until Skadi, only coming into fights if they come to you. While the ancients probably seem appealing, you can just farm so much faster in the actual jungle. With the right creeps, you can actually gain mana with Snake. Your favorite camps are Mud Golems. Holy shit, that's not something I thought I'd say two years ago. But they really are amazing. Get them low enough with Split Shot that they die from the Snake Bounce, get some distance, fire Snake, and it'll kill a Golem, then kill the other Golem, then damage the four mini Golems that spawn on their death. Each of these creeps have 400 mana, of which you steal 80, so 480 mana from a 170 mana spell. Dropping a Skadi can get you to full mana with one camp. And you've got Mask of Madness. If you need to go back to base, you've done something really wrong. Medusa is a snake. Therefore, she scales well into late game. <laughs> because of her finely tuned skills, I mean. In fact, I actually don't know why I mentioned the snake bit, that's completely irrelevant information. After scouting in a damage item, you can feel pretty confident pushing towers, taking Roche, and generally just moving towards ending the game. That does not mean, however, that you should be trying to take Rexes while your teammates, who have given you all of their farm, try and make space. Medusa taking towers and not using split shot is like a man with five arms only playing one drum. There's so much missed potential here. Get your team all rallied behind you and fight with them. Stand your ground, you little puss. You're supposed to stand there jumping into every bullet that comes your team's way, so go for it. Load them all up on your scaly shoulders and carry them to victory. So that sums up another hero that is just never played the way she's meant to. I hope I've inspired you to give her another shot, but whatever you do, good luck and have fun, I think is the line. Oh God, listen to my voice in the first part of this video. It's filled with youthful innocence and joy. And now listen to me. These videos take 
weeks to make, but hey, if you're hearing this, you must have enjoyed it. This guide was brought to you by the following awesome people. I for Trouble, Jacob Miller, Shoot, John Boone, Milo Cott, Luke Peterson, and Rhett Mitchell. If you want your name here too, check out my Patreon page. Give it a read and consider sponsoring if you want me to write and only where to play guide for your favorite hero. In all honesty, without Patreon, I wouldn't even make these videos. They take far too long and are catered towards an extremely niche part of an extremely niche game. If you want to keep this series running, I really need you to sponsor my Patreon. Literally any amount is fine. Because it's been so long since I made any videos, my Patreon has taken a few hundred dollars in damage. I don't mean to beg, but currently it costs me more to make these than I earn, which is probably a bad career move. To the rest of you, tune in next time to see Eggs Ricky, Armlet Zeus, and Phase Boots Weaver.